In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Uh, welcome everyone to our Eucharist here this for this Sunday. Uh, and we celebrate today the feast day of all saints, as well as the first Sunday of the kingdom season. O on a day like all saints, this is a time for us to give thanks to God for the ordinary, everyday, hidden people of God who have been heroic in virtue through their lives, but in a quiet, unknown way. All Saints is a thanksgiving for the quiet works of mercy, of compassion and kindness shown by countless unknown Christians through the years. As we celebrate this feast day, on this Sunday, we have much to give thanks to God for, for the gift of the Church to the world, and for the presence in that Church still today, even in our own congregation, those who have responded to the call of God to be holy outwardly and inwardly. We begin, as always, asking for forgiveness and mercy for the times when we haven't responded well to our vocation of holiness. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace, so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we have our readings, and many thanks in advance to uh, Ross, uh, our ordinand, for uh, reading for us uh, from uh, the relative freedom of Oxford. And again, many congratulations to Ross on his recent marriage. A reading from the book of Revelations. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, 
from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honour and power and might, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 24 The response is, The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, and on the waters he made it firm. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Stay awake and stand ready because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fulfilled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? This is a line from our first reading from the book of Revelations which tells in that vision, that prophetic vision of what the church might look like. Great robes of, uh, great hordes of saints robed in white uh, who have all been through the great persecution. But who are they? Who are these robed in white? Well this comes back to the essential mystery of the church, well, who is the church? Can, can you identify who the people are who belong to Christ's church? And if you could identify them, could you distinguish that whether they were saint or sinner by their conduct, by their outward appearance? And so the idea of identity of saints is a part of that ongoing mystery of revelation of how God continues to speak through ordinary, everyday men and women to be a force of good, bringing others knowledge of the good news, as well as inviting them to join in their lives of holiness. But who are these who are robed in white? We hear more of this, uh, a, a kind of a narrowing of the identity of, of the great saints, and many of us, truth be told, will have some idea of what it means to be holy to be naturally compassionate, naturally unselfish, naturally generous with time, with resources, and also seeking the good of the other, for the good, for the other person's sake, and not seeking any kind of reward back. But there is another element to that. That's what I've described to you. It could be a description of a naturally moral and ethically righteous person. What is the sanctity in that? what makes it different between that person, moral uprightness and sainthood, I suppose, is that closeness to God. The idea that the saints have some kind of special insight that allows them to live and behave in the way that God wants, and that they, through this inner orientation, have discovered some genius, some avenue into the very heart of God, God himself. We have, of course, the great saints that we all know about and whose feast days we remember constantly. And, and for example, St. German or St. John uh, or St. Michael or even St. David or St. Patrick, uh, the great sort of heroic saints uh, of legend. And we can almost set them apart and set them on high and they are people who we long to be like but whose lives really aren't very well known to us. The other more recent heroes of faith, you've got uh, Mother Teresa, you've got Martin Luther King, even Gandhi, a non-Christian person who most people would describe as living a saintly life. They might be more approachable. But we also have on the other side uh, with great heroes that we raise up, we are um, also tearing down statues of great heroes from the past uh, who are, in, even in our own country, very recently in this past week, the tearing down of the statue of Thomas Picton. Because, not, not because of his exploits at the Battle of Waterloo, but because of his uh, time as a governor and ruler and exploiter and persecutor of slaves in the West Indies and we, our times are changing and these fat past uh, people we find no we can't support that any longer and so the heroes of the past and their behaviour 
is now no longer tolerable because it's no longer seen to be worthy of emulation. And that idea of emulating the saints, our opening prayer really takes on that. The idea that we follow the blessed saints in their virtuous and godly living. But how on earth do we do this? Again, the opening prayer says it all. Through the grace of God, we too might become saints. No matter what the identity of our saints are, what isn't doubted on this feast day of all saints is that we are called to join in to those lives, to that very life of holiness. And our prayer in this Eucharist today is that we one day might be part of that body of saints that makes up the mystical body of Christ that is the Church. And that someday people pray for us and that we in turn in a great unity of prayer from the next life are praying nurturing those who are also on that path towards holiness whether we'll ever get there god knows but at this stage it's all about desire do we desire to become part of the saints of christ and as we continue this Eucharist, our prayer is that God might deepen within us that desire and that longing for the grace of holiness to, uh, to illumine our lives and the lives of those around us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray this day for the church in the world built on the foundation of the saints, that we and people like us may become faithful, ever more faithful to the teaching of Christ, so that in all the life of the church, we may reveal his likeness. In our own diocese, we pray for the deanery of Pontecreve and their area dean, Michael Gable, in the Anglican prayer cycle, we pray for the province of West Africa. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the world that is so often deaf to the only teaching that can bring true joy. Grant to this generation the spirit that inspired the saints, that all may walk in the way of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Teach us to recognise the holiness of other people. Give to us, our families and friends, grace to live as Jesus taught his disciples. 
Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy on those who are in great tribulation, persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Bring relief in their distress and assurance of your blessing for all who are steadfast in faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are in hospital or who are sick at home, especially those uh, who are struggling with the immediate or long-term effects of COVID-19. Grant them your healing presence, O God. Lord, in your mercy, we pray in silence our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have died. We remember the recently departed. We remember especially Peter Mason, Anna Bondarenko, and our own Sidonia Innocent, who died just last night. We pray too for the former members of our faith community who have gone before us in faith, as well as in this as in this month of November, all of the holy souls who populate the church, both past and present. Lord, in your mercy, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. From this church of St. German to your homes, wherever you may be, we wish that the peace of Christ may come and stay with you. Peace be with you always. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, heavenly King, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal Word. Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. 
you sent him to be our Saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting love. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper.
give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. Just before our final blessing, just a, a few announcements. Um, during November, we normally remember those who have gone before us. Uh, we remember the, the all this on All Souls Day. We traditionally remember those saints and those members of our families who have died. Uh, we remember them through the month of November. We'll also remember this year those who have died as a result of the. Uh, coronavirus pandemic and perhaps those who perhaps haven't been able to have a, a full and proper funeral as they would would have hoped for uh, and again next Sunday uh, we have our remembrance Sunday when we, we uh, call out the names of those who gave their lives especially during uh, the wars the great wars of the last century um, so we will also have next Sunday uh, during the service uh, we'll pause for two minutes. I'm not sure if we'll have actually two minutes uh, of quiet in the service. I'm not sure yet how that will actually work, uh, but we might. Uh, or we could suggest that uh, maybe people pause the, the recording uh, for two minutes silence. Um, we'll, we'll see how that actually works out next week. Uh, but our own remembrance of the names that are typically brought forward each, every, each year at this time, we will Instead of praying for those on All Souls Day the 2nd, we will do that on uh, Monday, uh, the 9th of November, at the, the first Eucharist back after the short fire break lockdown here in St. Germans on the Monday evening at 6 o'clock. We will remember those names then. Traditionally, on the first Saturday of the month, we, uh, a few gardeners who are attached to our community, they gather in the memorial garden just outside. Uh, just to do ongoing work and maintenance on our garden and uh, I, but we can't really do that this coming Saturday but uh, we can on the second Saturday so we will have um, uh, on uh, well actually not the second Saturday on uh, Saturday two weeks from now uh, we'll have an autumn tidy uh, details of this are in the newsletter calling all gardeners from 10 30 to 12 30 on that Saturday for an autumn tidy Whilst that's taken place, some people tend to also come into our church and, and to get ready uh, and to do ongoing repairs and maintenance of our church too. And if you would like to join us, you'd be more than welcome, socially distanced, of course. I've mentioned the lockdown. Uh, we are right in the midst of it as I speak and our services, as you are watching this, you know, have uh, moved online. Um, but we hope to still have uh, this coming uh, Wednesday, the 4th of November at 10 o'clock. Instead of our weekday Eucharist, we'll have a Zoom coffee morning and I will email out uh, the codes and the invites for that in due course. An update on the night shelter. Um, we are hearing lots of different reports of what is happening in terms of the ministry to uh, the, those who are rough sleepers and homeless in our city. And the general consensus is, is uh, coalescing into that this year, the night shelter, as it has taken place in previous years, is just not safe or if we were going to pursue it, the numbers would be very small uh, and also the risk, the ongoing risk uh, of spreading the, 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 the infection the, the, um, is still strong to our volunteers as well as to those who might be coming. The council has also prepared some emergency accommodation self-contained units, uh, most of which actually are in Adamstown. Uh, and so there is enough provision uh, to house many, many homeless people in our city. But there are still a very small number of people who are not engaging with that program uh, for whatever reason. Most of these reasons are to do with issues of mental health. And so no matter what is happening, they still are reluctant to engage. Um, and it's unlikely they would even come to us even if we open but so we are not ruling anything out but certainly we're watching and waiting 
but for, for the moment we are pausing and postponing any formal announcement about the, the night shelter in terms of opening before Christmas. Things might change after Christmas, in which case there might be a need for us to open, but uh, we're keeping our options open on that. So again, details of this are in the newsletter. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't already booked or ordered some calendars to distribute uh, to see Richard Davy, if you don't have Richard's email, just send an email to me and I, I'll forward that on to him and then uh, he can make sure that you get a, a however many calendars you want to give out at Christmas time uh, as you need. It's a charitable fundraiser. Some of the money comes to St German, some goes to uh, our charities and we have a few charities through the year that we support, especially Site 2020 Direct. Uh, which is an eye, eye charity based in Malawi and countries near Malawi. I think that's it. Thanks again to Ross for reading and also to Owen for our responses uh, here today. I wish you, wherever you are, very peaceful and a relaxed All Saints Sunday. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. Oh, we've got that wrong. I got the look. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 